Lap swimming has been a tradition with New York City Parks for 33 years. The Lap Swim program is designed to promote and encourage physical fitness within adults 18 years and older. This summer, over 12,000 swimmers took the plunge swimming 15,200 miles. First, second, and third place awards will be presented to the men and women who completed the most laps at each site. The top male and female overall lap swimmers will be recognized and those who swam 25 miles or more will receive a t-shirt. Second place, Bonnie Dietrich. And first place, Crystal Hart at 51.4 miles. And for the men, third place, D David Camacho. Second place, Yao Yao. And first place, William Singer at 48 miles. Well, this is part of our lap swimming program. We have a morning swim and then we have a night owl swim. And we have it for approximately six weeks during the summer. And we have over 12,500 swimmers who come out and swim each year. So this year they've done this. And this is the culmination of the final event. So it's a big party. Everybody comes out. This is the 33rd year that we're doing this program. And it's just a wonderful time that people come together. They get training. They do fitness. And it's just a thing that has really taken off and has been very successful. And we're very happy about it at the Parks Department. And looking forward? Looking forward, you know, our, this is just one part of our aquatics program. John Hutchins is our director, and we do basically a lot of different things. We do learn to swim programs for young children and for adults. We do a swim for life program for second graders in, uh, in, uh, pu in public schools. And we also do a lot of, we have a, a youth team that, you know, comes out and over a thousand kids participate in swim teams throughout the city. And we provide other programs for seniors, a sweet seniors, senior uh, splash program and also adapt to swimming. So there's all these, pro we must reach approximately 55,000 kids and adults throughout New York City. And it's probably the most successful and largest public swim and free, I might add, program in the city, in the, in the, in the country. Uh, my name is Adina Long. I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Public Programs for New York City Parks. So today we're celebrating the 33rd year of uh, the annual uh, awards for the lap swim program. Uh, it's pretty amazing how many people come out uh, and, and participate every summer. We have an early bird and, uh, and a, na a night owl lap swim sessions at uh, several of our outdoor pools. It's approximately an hour and a half uh, for both sessions and people are welcome to come to both, and many, many do, but um, each, uh, each component of the awards is either for early or late, not both combined, because, you know, that would not be fair. Um, but it's great, it's just a, a, a great sense of camaraderie and, and uh, sort of very natural, but, but very healthy competition. Um, and, you know, swimming is just one of the best uh, f physical fitness activities out there. And we're just so excited that we're able to share this with New Yorkers. And you can see, I mean, this is such an amazing turnout, um, how much people love uh, the Lapsman program. With us is Margaret Swicer from John Jay Pool, a third place winner. Margaret, how many miles did you swim? I swam 35 miles and I started swimming 20 years ago in John Jay. It it was a it was a fabulous start. I used to go to work in the morning, and before I went to work, I swam, and I was invigorated the whole day. Now I'm retired, and I spend more time in the pool, and I'm still invigorated. But more than that, the ladies in the pool who are there year after year, and I'm talking maybe ten years, they just give me so much incentive to swim. They challenge me constantly. A good example is just yesterday. The weather wasn't so good, so I decided, well, no one's going to be there, but let me go find out. I walk to the pool and everyone is there. In I jump. <laughs> and and just keep swimming and it's uh, very good uh, for my mind I use it for meditation too because I'm a caretaker so it really helps me and I keep in shape 
I swim at John Jay also, and, and it does, uh, it, it is a family setting, and I do it for also physical fitness, but also it, it does make you feel so much better mentally and you're, focused throughout the whole day. Right, you're part of my challenge. I see you there every day. And ah, I'm there every day. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Okay. With us is Mary Sherwin, who is a swimmer at John Jay Pool, one of a, a, a buddy. A matter of fact, a very fast swimmer, actually faster than <laughs> myself, but but uh, maybe you a couple days there, you couldn't uh, uh, make it to the pool. T tell us a little bit about your uh, swimming experience uh, this year at John Jay. So John Jay is an amazing place to come swimming, and after all, it's free. I mean, what more? where else can you get such a great bargain? The staff are really sweet. Wing is wonderful. And I was actually able to swim 25 miles in both the morning and the evening sessions this year. I made it a goal. It's a hard goal to achieve, but I did it. And the really nice thing is when you wake up in the morning, you can start your day in a crystal clear blue water pool with friends like Crystal and other swim buddies who are over here. And then you go to work and you're refreshed and awake and you feel like you've already done your exercise for the day. Or if you're really tired after work, you have a way to go relax and work off the stress of the day. So I really think it's a gem. It's a, the best, one of the best kept secrets in New York. And it's really helped me stay healthy and enjoying the summer. And one of the other things I think about when I swim is I always look up at the sky because most of us can't really swim outdoors most of the year. And it's so beautiful to look at the sky, the sunrise, the sunset, the moonrise, the blue moon. I was swimming the day of the blue moon. It was just really beautiful. And that was, that is what I enjoy also, outdoors. And, and also it's, it's a much more violent swim in its own way because you have the outdoor element, the cold, the rain. Do, do you notice that? Yes, and you also have to pass people sometimes or there are different speeds of people. So we have lots of waves in the pool depending on who's swimming there, which is also fun. Well, some people could use a little pool <laughs> etiquette. Uh, could you give us a couple rules on pool etiquette? Well, the general rule is if you touch someone's feet, that person moves over at the end of the lane. And if there are a lot of people in the pool, you probably don't want to do flip turns because flip turns are fine if everybody's swimming the same speed. But if they're all swimming different speeds and the lanes are quite wide at John Jay, it could cause a lot of an accident. And so we just want to have pool safety in mind when you're swimming. So essentially, if I think that it's we're all New Yorkers, it's free, and we all have to be kind to each other in the pool. That's the basic idea, it's pool etiquette. Well, thank you very much. And, and, and Mary, before we end, we're, we're both from the Midwest. I'm from Warren, Ohio. I'm and... from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. <laughs> people from Ohio are great people. And go Tribe. <laughs> go Tribe. <laughs> well, we don't want any Yankees to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you, Crystal. It's been really great getting to know you this summer, and I hope to see you more next summer. <laughs> I think you should talk to my swim buddies over no, here, no, Sam. No, no. Shy. I also have no, to no. say the really cool thing about swimming you. at the pool wait, is wait. that you get to meet really cool people from the neighborhood, Sam and Sandy, yeah. and Sam's share. What and Sam's wife, yes. Sherry, and you get to just. You get to know your neighbors in a completely different way than you do normally in New York. So I think that's the other really cool thing about John Jay. Wave. Hey, Sam, tell us about your experience. Oh, I had a fantastic time. I just, um, I don't know, I, I just randomly discovered it online and, and decided to just go for it. And, and um, I don't know, I just really had a wonderful time and, and I, I got addicted to it, actually. I, if I missed a day, I sort of felt guilty and um, and I, I just, I, I just, just would go and just swim, swim, swim to the best of my ability. Just do, you know, just go as far as I could. Oh, and Sam's a trophy winner. I mean, little unbeknownst, I mean, surprisingly, um, one of the staff walked up to me and told me that I was a second place swimmer. I had no idea. Like, when I went into this, I didn't think I could swim a mile, let alone what I have swum, so. How many miles did you swim? Well, so far, 77. Uh -huh. 77 and, and for the trophy? Uh, for the trophy, um, 50, 50 miles in the evening, yeah. Do you swim during the winter? Uh, yes, I do, yeah. I, I swim at New York Sports Club pool on the breeze side. Okay, well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you also swim? Tell us about I do swim. 
Um, I had a good time this year, too. I met my husband at John Jay eight years ago, so I'm internally grateful for the New York Parks and Recreation Department. With us is Jane Katz, and, and who's this, Jane? Oh, this is Nemo. This is the Pitt Street Hamfish Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> and Jane Katz, for our audience, is a pioneer of, in, in what, the 1960s? You were with the Olympics, or you, or you had synchronized swimming basically recognized. Could you tell us a little bit about that, that whole development? Sure. Well, synchronized swimming used to be called water ballet. And that was the beautiful uh, Wikiwachi um, Esther Williams was definitely um, the swimming star and did a form of synchro which now is very competitive. And so getting it to the Olympics took 20 years from 64 until 1984, which was in Los Angeles. And we traveled throughout the world teaching people synchro, as we would call it. They couldn't spell it, but now they're beating us. So it's, it's gone a long way, as any sport would, and that's really, really exciting. So it's great to still be alive and well and, um, and synchronizing throughout the, uh, the decades. Well, we must all thank you, Jane. <laughs> well, I thank everyone, and especially yourselves, for promoting aquatics and swimming. Uh, and all your wonderful programs to tell people the wonders of the water because it works for everybody. And it's fun. That's the best part. It is fun. And now today, well, Dr. Jane Katz actually written some books. And, and what are you doing today? I'm still teaching at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, celebrating my 50th anniversary of teaching a swimming and aquatics at the City University of New York. And, um, you know, there's always a new mermaid or merman uh, en route. And I'd like to give you our latest mermaid, uh, which is going to be... Um, a little mermaid for you and hope that that will uh, encourage many many others likewise because you're in there all the time and we love that and that's special to continue thank you thank you thank you see you in the pool with us John Hutchins who is the head of, of the lab swim program here T tell our audience a little bit about this program the program started in 1983. This is our 33rd year of organized lap swimming. Uh, this year, more than 12,000 swimmers participated in the program, S swam more than 15,000 miles over the summer for health and fitness. And, and tell us about some of the other programs that, uh, that, that the Parks Department uh, sponsors. The Parks Department has wonderful programs for children. We do a program called Swim for Life. It's unique because children are bused to parks, pools, so that we can teach them to swim during the school day. And they're all second graders, so they learn to swim as part of their school curriculum. And we have after-school learn to swim programs, Saturday learn to swim programs, and it's all free. <laughs> that's, that's the main word here, free. It's free. <laughs> well, thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Another successful year. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the 33rd New York City Lap Swim Program. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you at the pool. And now we go to the World Stamped Show where the U.S. Postal Service helps the National Park Service celebrate its 100th anniversary with the dedication of the National Parks Forever Stamps. It's the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service, and in recognition and celebration, the United States Postal Service released these 16 stunning stamps. Thanks for uh, joining us today for the presentation of the United States Postal Service's forever stamp commemorating the National Park Service. Today, the United States Postal Service is continuing a century-long tradition of supporting international philatelic expositions. This show has been held every decade uh, in the United States since 1913, and this is the first international stamp show held in New York since 1956. Like all of you, I'm passionate about stamps, and I can tell you this is truly a stamp collector's paradise. I would like to thank the organizers of the World Stamp Show for creating such an important gathering of the World Stamp Collectors. The World Stamp Show is a forum for the nations of the world. 
The many countries represented here are displaying their history, their heritage, and their culture. Postage stamps issued throughout the world reflect national achievements and artistry and the best of every nation. And that makes this a special venue for the United States Postal Service to issue this new set of postage stamps. As noted, by the end of the show, we will have issued eight new stamps. And today, we have the honor of issuing a new stamp pane, which includes 16 new stamp images in honor of the National Park Service's centennial anniversary. The National Park Service is one of America's greatest assets and national treasures. There are 411 locations throughout the United States maintained by the National Park Service. These parks and preserves and scenic byways protect our nation's natural and historical assets. They provide the public with an opportunity to enjoy America's beauty and the great outdoors. And they were visited more than 300 million times last year. We encourage everyone to visit our national parks and discover or rediscover the abundant opportunities for exploration, learning, and fun. In so many ways, America's National Park Service reflects the highest ideals of our country. The men and women of the National Park Service preserve public treasures that extend beyond the stunning vistas and habitat for wildlife that we associate with our national parks. They provide public places for recreation, they manage museums and historical estates, and they maintain our most famous monuments. The National Park Service exemplifies our collective desire to preserve our connection to the land, nature, and our heritage, and to maintain what we find beautiful in our world for the benefit of future generations. The United States Postal Service is honored to help celebrate the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service through the issuance of 16 stamps commemorating America's national park system. On the stamps we are about to unveil, you will see 16 images representing national parks from Alaska to Hawaii and Maine to Florida. So we are pleased to share these majestic works of art with you. It is an honor to have our next speaker here today. Peggy O'Dell is the Deputy Director of Operations for the National Park Service. She has a major role in managing the more than 20,000 employees that serve in 407 national parks and offices around the nation. She oversees every aspect of park operations, including the preservation and protection of 84 million acres, 100 million museum objects, 27,000 historic structures, and 85,000 miles of rivers and streams, as well as recreation, education, and hospitality services for the more than 283 million people who visit national parks every year. Wow. I thought the Postal Service had some big numbers. <laughs> Prior to assuming her current position, Peggy served as the Regional Director of the National Capital Region for two years and as the Superintendent of the National Mall and Memorial Parks in Washington, D.C. She's a great advocate for our national parks and monuments. Please welcome to the podium, Peggy O'Dell. You know, most people don't remember, but artists were instrumental in showcasing the beauty of national parks in the late 19th and 20th centuries, bolstering public and political support for the creation of the National Park Service in 1916. President Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson did the honors by establishing the National Park Service. Since that time, the National Park Service has been entrusted with the care of all of our national parks with the help of Last year, 440 million volunteers, folks who volunteer their time working in national parks because they love them. With, with the help of those volunteers and partners, we safeguard these special places and we share their stories 
with last year's record-breaking visitation of 307 million visitors to our national parks. That's a lot of people who love and visit their national parks. And we have a wonderful um, career staff. 20,000 permanent employees of the National Park Service work hard every day to preserve these places for the American public. So let's hear it for the employees of the Park Service. Many of these works of art that are showcased on the stamps in this collection are part of the National Park Service's museum collection. With over 45 million objects and specimens, the National Park Service cares for and manages the largest museum system in the country. Go figure, who would think that? The collections tell a very powerful story of our land, its people, diverse cultures, varied habitats, flora, fauna, significant events, and innovative ideas that continue to inspire the world. From Assateague Island to the Grand Canyon to Glacier Bay, the stamps also illustrate the vast breadth of the national park system. There are 411 national parks across the country, covering more than those 84 million acres in every state and federal territories. The last park was just proclaimed by President Barack Obama a month ago, the Belmont Paul National Women's Equality National Historic Site. See, it's so new, I don't even have the name right yet. <laughs> the Belmont Paul Women's Equality National Historic Monument right in downtown Washington, D.C. And it was created on Women's Pay Equality Day. So I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> The National Park Service Centennial is an exciting once-in-a-generation moment, and we are inviting everyone to find your park this year. We hope that these stamps will help us inspire a whole new generation to discover their national parks and to enjoy them, some for the very first time. I am under the impression that even when I receive a bill, if it has a national park stamp on it, it will be a more enjoyable experience. <laughs> National parks are places of beauty and learning. They preserve our national stories, and sometimes they remind us of our difficult past. It is all there for Americans to explore and enjoy. During this centennial year, we invite all Americans to find your park. And please find us on visityourpark.com and on social media to learn more about the centennial celebrations going on all year long. My heartfelt thanks to the United States Postal Service, to their employees, for the excellent work partnering with the National Park Service to honor the National Park Centennial with this fabulous paint of stamps. Thank you. We have 411 national parks across our country and all the federal territories right now, and they commemorate everything from our most important historic moments in time um, and all the way to the most breathtaking landscapes that we have all across the country. And what year? This is the 100th year? This is, this is the centennial of the National Park Service. President Woodrow Wilson signed the law that created the National Park Service in 1916. So 100 years later, we now have 411 units of the National Park Service. Is there a park that maybe gets more uh, uh, visitors or, you know? Well, the most visited park um, recorded for us every year is Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's on the East Coast, highly accessible to huge amounts of people, but the most probably well-known national parks remain those western icons, Yellowstone, Yosemite, the Grand Canyon, Mount Rainier, all of those wonderful landscapes that people have um, visited since right after World War II when people started traveling west in their cars for the first time. And do they have camping sites at, at many of these parks? Absolutely. We have many recreational activities across the Park Service. The best way to start checking out the parks is to go online, www.nps.gov, and search for the state, search for the park, search for any kind of interest that you have. You can also find travel itineraries that follow particular themes across the National Park Service, such as the Civil War or the Civil Rights issues. Oh, what a great vacation this would be this summer. Oh my gosh. We are expecting massive visitation this year because it's our centennial. We are encouraging everyone to get up, get out there, and find your park. So I, I, I photographed this, the, the image that's on the stamp was a, a photograph when I was working at Mount Rainier National Park. I was an astronomy ranger and I was working at the Night Sky Program and we noticed that there's the Northern Lights. So I went down after the show 
to capture that in a video. And I never planned on turning it into a, a photograph. I just wanted a video. So after that, I combined all the images into a photograph, and that's what's seen on the stamp now. And, and how did you get involved with, with photography? It's just something, you know, when I was a kid, parents got me a camera when I was young, but you know, I got a telescope when I was young, and I wanted to photograph what I saw in the night sky. So something fun uh, to be able to share with everyone, the actual photos, something visual people can look at. Just remarkable. The I believe in the parks a lot. You know, I want to get young kids involved in the park. So the goal is to get more folks to join and and support that movement to enjoy the national parks. They're treasures, you know, for everyone in the you know, on the planet. Definitely. With this Postmaster General Megan Brennan, and you know, the Postal Service is always known to recognize uh, special occasions. Would you like to fill our audience in on today? Yes, in fact, the Postal Service is proud to partner with the National Park Service and help celebrate the 100th anniversary of our park system and with these beautiful commemorative stamps. Encourage everyone to purchase those stamps and visit our national parks. And, and there are 16 different uh, uh, photos on these stamps? Yes, correct. There are 16 stamps, uh, different photos on this pane, and you see the beauty of our national park system from Hawaii to Maine to Florida. Thank you very much. Thanks Anything for being here. Buy some stamps. Thank you. <laughs>